Hello again. So I'm coming to you today from a grade six art class over at Eastview. Can't believe the amount of talent in this classroom. It's sure, sure a lot uh, stronger than my artistic abilities. But you know what, that's just a reminder that all of our students come to us with different starting points. Whether it's academic starting points, behavioral, emotional, social, their mental health and wellness, uh, their physical needs, uh, even financial matters. They all have different starting points. But I know you know that already and I think that's why equity has resonated with our district so strongly. It's why our conversations have been so rich on this subject for the last few years. And I'm proud to say that our Board of Trustees has recently taken some really good feedback from our stakeholders and redefined equity as three specific outcomes. Barrier reduction, which we really have been focused on for the last few years. Student supports, making sure we're aligning all of our supports, including mental health supports, to help support every student to the best of their abilities. And then maybe most important of all, excellent instruction. When we put those three things together, they can be very powerful. So let's chat about equity. I want every student in Red Deer Public to succeed. We need to support uh, students in many ways. Let's talk about the academic, the social, the emotional, and the behavioral needs, which is part of, of what we're all trying to do. Pyramid of support. It's universal, it's targeted, specialized. Basically, it's whatever the, the student needs or the child needs, that's what we try to do. Equity is about fairness. It's about what's doing right for the students at Red Deer Public. It's a very large team. The team consists of teachers, EAs, counselors, CLWs, the LA team, which is learning assistant team, the FNMI, all classified caretakers, and of course, let's not forget the parents. Uh, my dad was bipolar and uh, was diagnosed in July of 1993 and committed suicide in April of 94. For a period of a, you know, well over a year, uh, lived with my dad uh, suffering and battling mental illness, so I got to experience that firsthand. In 2003, um, suffered a, a concussion that ended my hockey career, and I went through my own period of depression. When you've lived with someone who has suffered a mental illness and has, has worked to, to get better and get healthy and get through it, you, you see that it's an illness and you, you understand that in a, in a way that I think as society we're still coming to grasp with. You know, a lot of the times when I talk to people as a therapist, um, their problems started in elementary school and that's really when the brain is more plastic and moldable. The more we can impact their life in a positive way and reduce that stress the, and, and increase their emotional intelligence, the less likely they're going to suffer socially. The more um, likely they're going to do well in school, the, the better contacts they're going to make in their community. Um, so it, it just creates more resilient children that are, that are you know, a whole lot stronger moving forward. Um, as our involvement with Red Deer Public started with our first child going into school, I think we just became more aware of what the gaps were for a lot of kids. I think having these resources, having these relationships, having people involved on a daily basis is going to build that trust and build that relationship so that, you know, when, when we're dealing with issues, they're going to be caught early on and, and dealt with appropriately immediately positions of superintendent and assistant superintendent are really prioritizing mental health and really um, trying to make the limited dollars that we have make the most amount of impact. I, I think we are making huge strides. 20 years ago, the board instituted a fee waiver program. We recognized that there were uh, many parents and families in our district living below the poverty line who simply couldn't afford school fees. The mission statement reads that we're striving for excellence by inspiring learning and nurturing hope in every student. And that's what equity is all about. In that we have to recognize that different students have different needs. For a long time we operated on the principle of equality. Equality is the cookie cutter. We give everybody the same thing. And the problem is if you take students who are inherently different or unequal and treat them equally, all you do is reproduce and reinforce inequality. Equity is what it's going to take to create uh, the fully inclusive society.
I know of many staff members who use their own resources to respond to the needs of individual students. Um, and, you know, this is going the extra mile. And it's a result that is tailored to the individual needs of particular students. When you multiply it across the district as a whole, it affects most of our students. As we've seen time and time again at the Foundation, we've received such strong support from the community. Whether it was our Reading College, which met the literacy priority of the Foundation, or Bright Starts, uh, which has received tremendous support from the community, uh, or our Finish Line program, uh, which helps uh, students finish high school. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, to be able to engage our programs because we've had such strong support from the community. The Equity Fund is an important part of uh, trying to give teachers who are our frontline uh, workers on this particular issue a resource and an option to having to say to a child, look, I'm just sorry, but you're gonna have to stay behind. I think for a lot of the kids that will be helped by this program, they have every reason to think sometimes that life just isn't fair. With this fund available and as a resource, maybe some of these kids will believe that life can be fair. Our redefinition has made it more clear to everybody just what the expectations are. And it's really important that students come to school every day with the expe expectation for continuous improvement and doing the absolute best that they can possibly do. Um, and that's our ultimate goal, is to have students all achieve success wherever we can get them to their highest potential. It's really important that we allow them to achieve that. Excellent instruction will ensure that that happens. For a classroom teacher, they should have an expectation of being assisted in becoming the best they can be as well. Uh, we know that the most impactful thing is the teacher in the classroom. Um, research after research continues to tell us that there's nothing more impactful than having a very effective teacher in every classroom for every student. And so we need to help them become the best they can be and achieve their potential. It means that students can walk into a building knowing that they will have respectful relationships and they will have people that believe in them uh, and that they will achieve their, their fullest potential. Well, I've seen many changes in the dynamics of a classroom over many years of teaching. Um, Red Deer has become a more culturally diverse city and that's brought many new Canadian citizens into our classrooms who have limited English language skills. We also are seeing more special needs students who maybe a few years ago would have been placed in congregated programs who are now included in our neighborhood schools and classrooms. Many children, of course, will do very well with just universal instruction and support. Others' children need more targeted supports and even specialized supports. Then it might be working with individual students. It might be working with a small group. It might be me going into the classroom teaching a larger group lesson while the teacher can go out and work more specifically with students that need that support. It allows every teacher in our school to shine and do what they do best. I think one of the big things that we've been doing is working in our professional learning groups uh, and working with teachers and sharing what we know. If something's going really, really well in your classroom, share it with everybody else. Teach everybody else what's, what's working for you. If something's not going well, don't be afraid to ask for help. Seek out advice, look for professional development, try something new. You have to constantly be changing and adapting and learning from others. For students, I think they know that everybody in this building is on their team. They have a relationship with everybody. They know that we are all out there to support them and to help them. They also know that not everybody needs the same amount of support. They understand that fair isn't always equal and they'll tell you that. As a parent myself, I know that my daughter gets everything she needs in Red Deer Public Schools, and I'm proud to say she's always had excellent teachers. Uh, what excellence in teaching is? Yeah. I think excellence in teaching is just doing absolutely everything that you can to help every child achieve at their own level of excellence. It is working with your colleagues and sharing knowledge, and it's just, doing everything you can. Every child at the end of the day needs to be successful and we do everything we can for them. And that's what excellent instruction is. 
So I think the most important thing we tried to share with you in this video is that we're trying to redefine equity and put some meat on the bones. And that really there's three big outcomes that we're looking at. We've always been talking about reducing barriers, but now we're also talking about adding that student support layer and also the excellent instruction. I think when those three things come together, it's really powerful. And you know, when I think about those three circles, what I find really fascinating is when you line those circles up, they actually make a triangle, which reminds me of our pyramid of support, which really is the one thing we're talking about in this district and the major priority of our district. And when I think of equity, really it's just a foundational principle of, of that pyramid of support. And I think that's what we've tried to bring to you this year with our video series, right, is those foundational principles for the pyramid of support. Equity, efficacy, our belief in kids, and collective responsibility, our belief that we're all in this together.